Hi there, this is Dr. Tammy Stewart to talk to you about your daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annual downregulation regimen. So what the heck does downregulation mean? So from a nervous system standpoint, you have certain stimulus that downregulates you. This is stuff like heat, dim lights, calming music, that makes you just kind of go, ah. Oh. Upregulation is the opposite of that. So neurologically, things that get us like up and going, things that are, are stimulating to us, bright lights, cold temperatures, um, really like revved up type of music. This is why we listen to that stuff when we're working out because it really gets us going. So our normal daily life, we have this fluctuating balance. And so how do we use this to our advantage in, in both our workouts, but all, mostly in our recovery? So in our workouts, you know, gyms are well lit. They have like really you know, loud music that's really kind of um, higher, faster pace that really gets you revved up for a workout because that's what you need for a workout. But to help you recover, what, what do we do with that? You know, we've heard of ice baths, we've heard of hot tubs, we've heard of like all these things that people do. So in a perfect world, we want to upregulate ourselves for the day and downregulate ourselves for the night. So again, in a perfect world, and I recognize we don't all live in a perfect world, but let's say you train in the morning and you know, you work out 5.30, 6.30 in the morning. That's when you take your cold showers right after your workout. Um, or you take your like warm shower to like clean off and then you like finish with a cold shower to really invigorate you and wake you up because you're stimulating your nervous system to like be ready for the day. Now at the end of the day, this is key. So that's when you want to take your hot shower, your hot bath, your hot tub situation. You want to do this in a dimly lit place. So most of us have showers and tubs in our bathroom. So if you dim the lights, light a candle or put like a little lantern in there in the corner or a flashlight, you know, up pointed towards the ceiling. Um, candles are my favorite because that flickery light is really calming to us. So that's also when you do your calming music. So now you've got your heat, which is neurologically calming, down-regulating. You've got your dim light, neurologically down-regulating and you've got your calming music. So everything in your system should be going, ah, you know, this is your time not to think about all the worries of the day, not to think about all the worries of the world. This is your time to just, ah, like let it go. And then you go to bed in a dark room. Also darkness is down regulating. So we talked about dim light, but also darkness down regulating. So if you have all of these things that are lit up in your bedroom, that's going to mess with your sleep on kind of a subconscious level. So the darker your bedroom, the cooler your bedroom, the better, because if you were coming in from this like hot shower, hot bath scenario, and then you're crawling into a nice warm blanketed bed, you're going to get much better sleep. Um, and you're going to overheat if the room is warm. So you need that coolness in the room. Um, coolness on your face, everything else is warm. It's like the recipe for like great sleep. Uh, now, at what point do we do our rolling out and our you know, lacrosse ball or our peanut situation? Other video if you don't know what that means. Um, the peanut part. So hot bath, then you do your stretching. Your muscles will be much more pliable. You've got increased blood flow. Everything's like calm, elastic, and like ready to, to be molded like taffy. So that's when you roll out. That's when you do your deep tissue self work with the, the cross ball or the tennis ball or the peanut or whatever. Then you stretch. So mobility work first, as far as like tissue work. If that, if you have a massage gun, that's a great time to use it. Then you stretch, then you go to bed. So Nighttime is down regulation time. Morning time is up regulation time. Not to say that you can't do, you know, you can't flip it around a little bit, but if your only time to get in your soft tissue work, to get in um, your, your rolling out, to get in your stretches is right after your workout in the morning, then do that. It's a heck of a lot better to do it than not do it. So, but in a perfect world, if you can do it where you're up regulating in the morning for your day and you're down regulating at night for great sleep, magic. It's magic for your recovery because most of our tissues recover during our sleep. So the better your sleep is, the better you're going to recover and the better you're going to be able to perform. So that's my mini version of a 
uh, daily recovery. Now, weekly recovery. What do you do at the end of the week that, that kind of mentally signals it's the weekend and I can, I can turn my, my work mode off? So for me, it's the candlelit bath. I, I do my shower every night, but then I do a long bath, 30 to 45 minutes with candlelight. For me, like I really like um, calming classical type music and that's when I do my own self-care. I work on my gut. I stretch my hamstrings in the bathtub. I do like a salt scrub situation for my skin. Like that's when I'm taking the time to do all of those things. And that's at the end of my work week. So sometimes for me that's Friday, sometimes for me that's Saturday nights. And I feel so much better going into my weekend when I do that. Cause it's like, I let go all of the week's stress and things that I'm thinking about for work and for friends and for family. And it's just my time to just focus on me. And it's really, really beautiful for mental health, for physical health, for all of it. So monthly, and you don't have to do the same thing that I do. You can do anything you want that works for you, but just be thoughtful and purposeful with it. You know, I do it right after my kids go to bed. So it's my time. My husband has his alone time, usually watching sports on TV. Uh, and then I have my time in the bath. So monthly. So lots of research has said that if you take one day off a month, if that works for your job and if that's even possible, but if you take one day off a month, so a Friday or a Monday or whatever, and you just give yourself a three day weekend, it is far more mentally healthy than taking two weeks a year. So I highly recommend that if you have it, that you can do that, do it. If not, leave work on a Friday night, go do something, camping, just have it be like a Zen weekend where you don't worry about chores and it's a staycation situation, but change it up a bit to where it's all about spending time with your family, down regulating, relaxing, not doing the bajillion hours of chores that we all have at home. Just one weekend a month, skip it. Your mental health will thank you. So will your body's health actually, because mental health is so tied into our body and recovery. Quarterly, if you can take like a mini vacation. So whether that's a Friday, Monday situation, but again, the research has said that if we take mini vacations spread out throughout the year, it's far more beneficial for our mental health than just taking a two week once a year. Now, if you can do all of that, take these mini ones, you know, once a quarter, then do your two weeks a year. Great. Um, but not all of us have a whole bunch of vacation time stored up. So do what you can do, but plan it out you know, six months in advance, a year in advance, and make sure that it happens. Cause you know, as well as I do, that if it doesn't end up on the calendar, it's not gonna happen. And then the summer's over and you're like, wait, I was supposed to do some stuff and it didn't happen. All I did was mow the lawn and work. Like that's not what we want at the end of our, our summer plans. So be diligent, be thoughtful, and put it on the calendar so you know it happens and make it a non-negotiable thing. You know, you need it, your spouse needs it, your kids need it, you know, it's good for everybody. So. Feel free to comment, like, subscribe. If you've enjoyed this video, we'd love to hear about it. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.